powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. The ACLU of Montana filed a lawsuit Tuesday to allow certain types of nurses to perform abortions in Montana. The ACLU says the suit seeks to expand access to abortion in Montana and help a soon to reopen Whitefish Clinic that had to be shut down because of vandalism. The suit asked the state judge to strike down a Montana law that allows only physicians and physicians assistants to perform abortions. It urges that advances, advanced nurse practitioners and nurse midwives can provide abortions safely and should be allowed to do so in Montana. One of the plaintiffs in the suit is a nurse practitioner who hopes to offer abortion services at an all-families health care clinic in Whitefish. The clinic was the only abortion provider in the Flathead Valley when it was destroyed by vandalism in 2014 and plans to reopen next month. ACLU Executive Director Caitlin Borgman says the suit is not just about the Whitefish Clinic but rather about making a legal service more available in the state. So out of our 56 counties, only 7% of Montana counties have an abortion provider. 93% lack any abortion provider. Some Montanans have to travel more than 150 miles to reach an abortion provider. So what this would do would be to expand the pool of qualified health care providers who can safely provide abortions under Montana law, which improves access. So and Attorney General Tim Fox is the main defendant of the lawsuit, saying his office will review it and respond accordingly. A four-and-a-half-hour-long armed manhunt ends in an arrest in Missoula today. 35-year-old William Newhoff fled authorities just after 9.30 a.m. Tuesday after U.S. Marshals attempted to take him into custody on a warrant. Residents and businesses in the East Missoula area were told to stay inside and lock their doors as authorities searched for Newhoff. The Missoula College and Bonner schools were also placed on lockdown. A witness has told MTN News that a police chase followed that ended in the Dakota Avenue area of East Missoula after a truck hit and damaged a home before hitting a tree. Coming to rest, the suspect fled on foot. Newhoff was arrested without incident around 1.45 p.m. Tuesday in East Missoula, and law enforcement say there is no further danger to the public. No injuries were reported due to the chase, and Newhoff has prior convictions for breaking out of Mineral County Jail in 2009, along with convictions for burglary, theft, and forgery. He's currently wanted for a probation violation. And switching to weather, a wet day for some of the region and some scattered snow and rain is still on the way for the rest of the week. For more on what we can expect, let's turn it over to Chief Meteorologist Aaron Yost, who has a look at our first forecast. Aaron? Yeah, absolutely an active day. A windy start to the day, too, across northwest Montana. Our cold front already impacted northwest Montana, now moving off towards the south and the east, taking most of that light snowfall along with it. Now, overnight tonight into the day tomorrow, we are going to see in a newly northwesterly flow uh, developed we are going to see some scattered snow showers. That's going to stay the case as we head into Thursday. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, another thing we might see, some enhanced lake effect snow for the east side of Flathead Lake. The active weather pattern is here to stay, though, for the time being. All those details coming up in the forecast on. All right, thanks, Aaron. Recycling changes are coming to the Flathead Valley as the county faces growing piles of recyclables with no place to put them. The move is in the wake of China's January 1st ban on some imports of trash, meaning for the Flathead that all plastic and tin cans must be thrown in the garbage come mid-February. Starting February 15th, we are not going to take plastics or steel tin cans in our recycling program, so please throw all that in the garbage. Um, aluminum cans, all paper products, you know, uh, newspapers, magazines, junk mail, all that's still good, and so is cardboard. So we still have a program. Don't give up completely. Prudney says part of the problem with the program is that plastics are not being sorted and are often commingled with other recyclables. It's a problem that isn't just in the Flathead Valley, but a global one. He says the decision was finalized by the Solid Waste Board last week, and he also says that Valley Recycling, a company that works with the county to provide the recycling bins, has scrambled to deal with the buildup of plastic and paper garbage since the ban went into effect and are holding on to the product for now, but it could end up in the landfill. Brutney says he doesn't know if this change will be permanent. We're hopeful that we'll, something will change and we'll be able to start the program again for the plastics and the steel. We're hopeful, but we don't know if that's six months or six years. We don't know. And he says aluminum cans, all paper products, and cardboard can still be recycled, and the restrictions do go into effect on February 15th.
Montana regulators say they're changing the way Northwestern Energy passes property tax costs onto its customers. They say the change will mean savings for residents and businesses around the state. State law allows Northwestern to automatically increase its residential and commercial service rates to account for property tax expenses, but the company has to deduct the portion of the cost that goes towards electricity it sells wholesale to large industrial customers and other utilities. The Public Service Commission says Northwestern underestimated that percentage, meaning other customers' rates went up too much. Cons commissioners say that Northwestern will have to adjust its rates a total of almost $3.5 million, which will amount to just over a dollar and a half a year for the typical resident customer. Even though no, for an average residential consumer, it's a, it's a small figure. Um, this is a change that will recur year on year on year. In terms of a policy change, it may have a lot more consequential impact than the dollars and cents that we're seeing right now. And they voted 3 to 2 to start applying for it in the 2017 tax year instead of 2018. President Trump addresses a sharply divided Congress and millions of Americans tonight, delivering his first State of the Union address with historically low approval ratings. The White House says the theme will be building a safe, strong, and proud America, and the president will strike a unifying tone. Mole Lung here reports from Capitol Hill. President Trump spent the day at the White House preparing for his big speech. He's expected to use his first State of the Union address to showcase his accomplishments, touting the tax overhaul and a strong economy. The country has been so divided on so many things. I wanted to unite this country. We, we have great success going right now. The president will promote a $1.7 trillion plan to rebuild aging infrastructure and an immigration compromise, including $25 billion for a border wall with cuts to legal immigration and a path to citizenship for 1.8 million undocumented immigrants known as dreamers. We're going to get something done. We hope it's got to be bipartisan because the Republicans really don't have the votes to get it done in any other way. There is opposition on both sides of the aisle to the White House immigration proposal, and about a dozen Democrats will boycott the State of the Union. I will not attend the State of the Union because this president has not honored nor respected the office of the presidency and has shown total disregard for our democratic institutions. Others will attend with dreamers, and many lawmakers will be wearing black. To honor the power of women uh, who are now coming out and giving voice uh, against sexual harassment and sexual violence. In the First Lady's box will be some first-time homeowners, local heroes, and others impacted by gang violence and the opioid epidemic. President Trump will address the crisis as well as trade and national security. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And Massachusetts Congressman Joe Kennedy III will deliver the official Democratic response to the president. And there will also be four additional responses representing the Democrats' diverse constituencies. Coming up in this week's Montana Made, we meet a veteran who makes custom holsters, saying that he has the outdoors in his DNA. That's next on KAJ.